Chapter 11 Aaron I hit the alarm when it blares Saturday morning, wishing I could turn it off and go back to sleep, but knowing that I can't. As much as I don't want to, I have to find a job today. After a quick shower, I head downstairs. The kitchen is quiet and empty when I enter, and I wonder again what my dad did with all the money. Was he drinking it away? Had he been inebriated when he got in the accident? No, that wouldn't make sense. If he'd been drunk, the cops probably would have been involved. Gambling, then? Or maybe a mistress? I can't imagine my dad having an affair, but then I never would have imagined him spending our money, either. I shake my head as I grab a bowl for cereal. None of it really matters, and all thinking about it will do is send my blood pressure boiling. What's done is done, and regardless of the reason, the simple fact now is that I have to step up. My mother and Molly are still not downstairs by the time I finish breakfast, so I jot out a quick note, letting my mother know I'll be back soon, and then I head out. But as I back out of the driveway, I realize I don't even know where to start. We took a career survey in school, but I didn't pay much attention to it, because I figured football would be my future. Now I'm wishing I could go back in time and focus. I know there are fast food jobs, but that's a last resort. I don't want to smell like grease and wear an ugly uniform if I can help it. Maybe a sales job? There are plenty of businesses in Lubbock. One of them is bound to be hiring. I head to Best Buy first. A sales job there doesn't sound too bad and at least I'd get a discount on electronics. But they aren't hiring. Neither are the sporting goods stores I hit next. The manager at Walmart tells me they'll keep my application on file, but that they don't usually have openings until Christmas. I decide to try a few coffee shops next. They don't seem quite as bad as fast food restaurants. And hey, who doesn't love free coffee? However, the managers there tell me I don't have enough experience and that I need to have jobs on my resume to be considered. I think about telling them it's hard to get a job when all the jobs want you to have previous experience, but no one is willing to give you that experience, but I don't. It wouldn't matter anyway. By this time, it's afternoon, and my stomach is complaining that I haven't given it nearly enough food. So I head to a local restaurant for lunch. Spending money eating out probably isn't wise, but I didn't think to pack a lunch, and I don't want to go home empty-handed. I've pretty much decided I'm not going home until I get a job. As I approach the front door, a large wanted sign grabs my attention. The aversion to working at a fast food restaurant was strong, but at this point, it feels like it might be all that's hiring, and that I'm qualified for. It won't have to be for long, and at least it will give me work experience that I can then take to another job. I take a deep breath and pull open the door. Can I help you? The boy behind the counter doesn't look much older than me, but I'm not sure if that's a good thing or not. Yeah, I was hoping to speak to someone about a job. He fumbles behind the counter for a second and then pulls out a piece of paper. Here. Fill this out and I'll tell the manager you're here. Uh, thanks. I take the paper, place a quick order, and then head to a nearby table to begin filling out the application. Like all the rest of the places, I don't have much I can put down. Football is the only thing I've done in and outside of school. And I'm beginning to realize how limiting it's been. I try to channel my previous English teacher and wordsmith my way through my experience and my desire to work here, but it still feels lackluster when I'm done. Are you here about the job? I look up to see a man staring down at me, who doesn't look much older than 30. His dress shirt and tie give him a manager feel, but his baby face certainly doesn't match. Yes, sir. Aaron Richards. I stand and stick out my hand like my father taught me. The man shakes it and then sits across from me. Okay, let's take a look. He scans my resume and then stares at me. 
Not much experience here. No, sir. I play football for friendship, and I haven't had time to work much. But my dad was in an accident, and I need to help out with the bills. The manager's brows lipped slightly. That's noble of you. Do you have any recommendations? I could give you my coach's number, but I'd prefer he doesn't know about the job. I don't want him to think I'm not serious about playing. You see, I need to play in order to get scholarships. I see. So I'm assuming your hours will be limited. I nod. Yes, sir. I was hoping for weekend hours, though I could add weekday shifts once football season ends. The manager taps his fingers against the table as he stares back down at my resume. My stomach drops, because I know he's going to tell me it's not enough. I need to be available more. I need to have more experience. I'm prepared to hear the same spiel I've heard all morning. But he doesn't say that. I was hoping for someone with more availability, but you seem like a good kid. And like someone who needs a break, so I'll take a chance on you. Really? I mean, thank you, sir. You won't be disappointed. I hope not. Now I will need you to come in for training one night next week before your first shift. Do you think you can swing that? I run through the schedule for the next week in my head. Yes, sir. As long as it's not Thursday night, because that's our game night. We can make sure it's not Thursday. I'll give you a call and let you know what day. Be sure to bring your license, because we'll need you to fill out paperwork as well. Absolutely. Thank you. I shake his hand one more time, and then finish the little that was left of my lunch. As I drive home, I can't help feeling relieved. It may not be much, but it's a job, and maybe it will help my mother out a little. She is sitting at the kitchen table when I enter, a weary look on her face and the weight of the world, rounding her shoulders as she stares at her laptop. I think about turning around and not bothering her, but the sound of my footsteps causes her to glance up. Oh, hi, honey. What have you been up to today? I was applying for jobs. Her eyes widen and she shakes her head. No, Aaron. I told you that I didn't want you getting a job. You need to enjoy your senior year. I sit down across from her, feeling much older than my 18 years, as I grab her hand. Mom, I heard you on the phone. I know we need the money. I got a job at a restaurant. It's only part-time, but surely it will help. Tears fill her eyes, and I wonder if I've said the wrong thing. Maybe I shouldn't have told her that I overheard her. Aaron, this isn't what I wanted for you, but I can't deny we need the help. However, you'll have to keep your grades up. But I am happy to see you stepping up and caring for the family. Thank you. She doesn't say that I've been selfish, but the idea smacks me between the eyes anyway, and the guilt follows. As I think back over the last few years, I realize I have only been focused on me, my future, and my fun. Maybe that's why I missed whatever is going on with my dad. And then before I think it through, the question escapes my lips. Mom, what happened to the money? She stares at me for a moment, and I'm sure she's going to tell me nothing, or lie and make up a story. But then she sighs and says, I don't know. I'm fairly certain your father got into gambling, but I haven't had the chance to talk to him since I found out the accounts were empty. I don't want you to worry about that, though. I've got some savings he didn't touch that will allow us to pay the bills, and I was able to pick up a few more hours myself that will help. We're going to be okay, though, right? God willing, she says with a soft smile. And right then, I know that I am going to church tomorrow. I haven't been close to God in a few years, but now seems like the time to remedy that.